All right, so I'm proud to announce that it is 2024 and I am very proud of myself. About two days ago, to be exact, I made a video. And uh, in the video, I uh, stated, you know, it was kind of clickbaited to be honest with you. I did deliberately write the title like that, but I wasn't expecting the kind of response I got. Even though I should not be surprised by whatever occurs in this, uh, in this environment to do with boxing. The title of the video was Why Noya Inui is next in line for those seeking a non-black panther bound hoop and why others are suspicious. You know what I mean? In all honesty, it was a clickbaity. It was a kind of kind of clickbaity, but a lot of people took the bait. And I'm not saying that I don't mean what I put there, what I said there, but the title itself was was more or less uh, deliberate. In order to attract some form of traffic, but I wasn't expecting the amount of traffic I got. Especially, I didn't even know that there would be so many people who have suddenly become Inui fanboy dick riders. I mean, seriously, seriously, they were really up in arms. Somebody wrote to me recently on on a live and said that oh, they really come for you. I was like, oh, you know, it's, it's nothing, and it really is nothing. But it has provided me provided me with material to make this video. And that's one thing I'm happy about because it allows me to make this video where I go for the comments themselves and if there's a point to be uh, to be responded to then I'll do that. If not then I'll keep it moving. But a lot of the responses of course are quite negative towards me. They presume that I have one particular kind of agenda or another because there's nothing based upon my experience of course in this uh, on earth in general there's nothing that a racist uh, and i'm not suggesting that open racist i mean just in, in its generic form but there's nothing that a person who doesn't particularly like black people or black people especially he doesn't really think much of black people likes more than the impression it doesn't have to be explicit because i don't think my the title of my video is explicit and if you listen to the content it's not it's not really bashing no you knew it's just questioning the motives behind trying to make him the born path pad but there's nothing that one of these racists or one of these with these people like more than the idea of somebody questioning their motives and in a roundabout way suggesting that it might have something to do with race because it, you know it kind of it's like it's like a green light for them to actually bring forward what they really feel about black people and how they want to uh, assess the matter while playing innocent. So that's what we're going to deal with today. And I'm not suggesting everybody who responds is responding that way, but there are a lot of people who did that, including some people who actually responded to the video, a few other videos. And I mean, I only responded to one person because I just, you know, I don't really want that guy, that, that guy's filth around me. But apart from that, everybody else is entitled to their opinion. It is what it is. So we're going to start off with a comment that came yesterday. And I'm hoping I get more comments actually. A comment that came yesterday says, Inui came into a new way to destroy two top fights. Two top fights to unify speaks. Okay, it says, Inui came into a new way and destroyed two top fights to unify speaks volumes versus Crawford, beating physically and mentally damaged Spence after a series of car crashes. That's his argument for suggesting that Inui should be number one pound for pound. I suppose you can make that argument. I just happen to disagree. Now, counter, to counter that argument, I, I would say, I, you know, even if Errol Spence was damaged, I would not necessarily claim that the people, that he wasn't better than a Fulton, or he wasn't better than Topalis, <laughs> that, that, uh, that, that, you know, he just beat. So, I mean, I mean, it's all subjective, of course. You can argue that it's all got to do with levels, that the level that, Earl Spence was fighting it against Terence Crawford. It was just a wee bit too much for him. Of course, the weight was an issue. He was struggling with the weight. And he just didn't have the skill level of uh, Terence Crawford. So the combination of both those things, you know what I mean, didn't help him against Terence Crawford. But, let's not forget that he did beat um, the Cuban. He did beat somebody else. I think he beat Danny Garcia. Before he moved on to Terence Crawford. And they stalled long enough and that's what happened so you know it's easy in retrospect to suggest like 
my new competition is somewhat better. I happen to disagree, that's all. So moving on to the next, he's got eight thumbs up for that. Now the next person writes, Inui destroys Chocolatito, Ringvisai, Chocolatito and Estrada all docked Inui when he was champion at 115, forcing Inui to move up. That's a lie. I think he moved up because apparently according to Inui, you know what I'm saying, he was obligated by the WBO to move up. That was a deal. You know what I mean? He, he, that's why a lot of those Japanese guys represent that belt. Morata as well represents the WBO belt. But it wasn't a case of all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you see how it works? All of a sudden, Chocolatito and Rondesai are duckers. They all ducked him. And Estrada, they all ducked. Th these guys that had the Superfly competition about three times in a row, they all ducked. You know? They all somehow ducked. Um, Noya Inui. You see how this works? You see how the propaganda works? And uh, you see how people, re they rewrite history when it favors them? And I, I just think that's bullshit. Well, anyway, there's some responses to that. I think I respond. I said, I said, got more excuses than a blind faith. He got more excuses than blind faith than a Wilder fan. You know what I mean? I just threw that in. Because there is a similarity. There is a similarity. What goes on? You see, here's the thing. It's like a short, like a horseshoe theory. You know what I mean? With two sides, you know what I'm saying? They meet up, they, they, they sort of become the two tips of the horseshoe. So they become the same thing towards both ends. They kind of curve towards each other. So these people, I'm pretty certain they've got very strong views about about Deontay Wilder and all this stuff. You know what I mean? And how the Deontay Wilder fan placed Deontay Wilder up there as being as having these ten defenses as having the greatest knockout power that they've ever seen and being uh, a, ch uh, a champion for such a long time. And you know all these these accolades that they wanted to give to Deontay Wilder. I see a similarity. And you know, I bet the Inui fan, the latter day Inui fan, I must say, will disagree. You know, wholeheartedly. You know what I'm saying? Fanatically. You know what I mean? Um, vehemently. That, no, there's no compare. How dare you compare? Because all they're going to see, all they're going to get is you compare the Inui to Wilder. Because that's kind of, well, that's a kind of blind faith. That's how they think. You can, uh, uh, and you know, the, the racial dynamic, of course, comes into it as well. But you know, that's more or less what I responded. And this one, this one writes, bro, there are articles of how Roman Gonzalez turned down the fight. Look it up, casual. Why don't you get? Don't you? Why don't you provide me with the evidence? There's articles, and that means there must be a plethora of fucking uh, resources out there, sources to back up what you just said. But you want me to look it up, casual? You see, when it comes to um. Inui, all of a sudden I'm a casual, but I write back and said, Inui ran up to 180 and his fan boys claimed he was obligated to do so by the WBO. That's why I, I you know, didn't get any Somebody found me up, I don't even know. I didn't even think I'd get from him. Anyway, the next one I've got is this. This, this gentleman writes, Happy New Year, man. First time coming across your channel. People need to leave race out of this and just go by what you as an individual see. I honestly think Inui deserves to be number one pound for pound fighter of the year. He went up in weight and dominated over Fulton. He was ranked pound for pound in. Uh, I don't know. Why didn't that, why didn't that continue? Uh, well, anyway, I get that. I, I can respect his point of view. There's nothing wrong with that. And you can say, yeah, leave race out of it. I'm saying that the people who are pushing so hard to make Inui number one pound for pound are the ones who are injecting race into it. You no, know, kind of surreptitiously. They know what they're doing. We have experience of what they're doing. And the reason why they're pushing so hard, instead of just mentioning like, oh, I see him as number one pound for pound right now. The reason why they're pushing it so hard is because they're looking for people to trigger so they can have an argument and claim that these black people are racist. That's why they don't, that's why they hate Inui. You see, you see the, you see the, the it's, it's not like, okay, they're allowed to actually question Inui. If you question Inui, according to these racist types, that means you hate him. That means you hate him. But in a way, I don't necessarily blame them as well because a lot of these guys that back the uh, Devin Haney's and the, uh, and the Deontay Wilders, as soon as you actually question whatever pay-per-view pay they did or how they fought or whether they're any good or their resume, they claim it's hate too. So I can be fair in my assessment and I've always been fair. But I do find that when it comes to a non-black fight oh, uh, uh, and there is some sort of substance there's some sort of substance that a group of people can use to try and make a point and argue then they jump on it and they and the weight of that 
the, the weight of all those people who are latter day supporters of Inui is gonna break it. So I, I've been there before. They're gonna break whatever ledge they're, they're sort of leaning on and hoping that, yeah, everybody else is going to see it from their perspective. I don't think so. And I'm just saying, from my experience, I've seen it all before. And it's gonna come crashing down. It is what it is. Now I might be wrong. I've always left that caveat that I might be wrong, but I doubt it very much based upon experience. Now that being said, this one says food for thought. Terrace did say that he fights who he wants to fight, while he knew he said he wants to fight whoever he whoever has the belt. But well they all say that at the very beginning, don't they? You know what I mean? And he knew he didn't fight the uh the Filipino guy, Casimero, who was calling him out aggressively. You know what I'm saying? He didn't just say, okay, fuck it, let me just fight him, did he? And then, I mean, the guy taunted him, did everything. You know? Donier uh, backstabbed that guy, Casimero, to go and fight Inui. He knew he took the fight, whereas Casimero is the one who was chasing after Inui, who wanted that fight. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying that Casimero would have beaten him. And that's actually interesting because if I go back to what this other guy said, this is something that you find a lot. He said he knew he destroys. Well, that's that's not proven. You get a lot of them saying, "Yeah, he knew he destroys them all. He knew he destroy. Yeah, he destroyed them all." Now that he's in a higher weight class, but when he was in their weight class, would have liked to have seen it. Now it's a bit too late, isn't it? And they've got older. So there you go. But um, going back to this, yeah, it says like uh, food for thought. Terrence did say he he. Sorry, Terrence did say he fights who he wants to fight. While he knew he said he wants to fight whoever has the belt. Fair enough. I think that Terrence Crawford also said he wants to fight whoever had the belt, and they put a lot of stipulations on him getting to the undisputed at welterweight division. And, I, and here's the other thing that people need to take into consideration: there are levels. One of the classic divisions in boxing is the welterweight division. Now you can be undisputed at, I don't know, Super Bantam, Bantam, God knows what. But the classic divisions, if you excel and you become an undisputed champion in the heavyweight division, in the middleweight division, in the welterweight division, I just happen to feel that it carries more respect than all the other divisions that were created along the way in order to facilitate giving people belts and making money by the sanctioning bodies you know what I mean? so if you are a champion if you become undisputed in one of those classic um, divisions and this is not to run down somebody like Canelo Alvarez who uh, became undisputed in the Super Middleweight division. I think there's a certain similarity there, but the classic. But I think that even though he is the undisputed champion at the middleweight division, uh, sorry, at the super middleweight division, if he had become undisputed at the middleweight division, I think he still would have probably carried more weight. You know what I mean? And I think that if you were undisputed in the cruiserweight division, nobody's really going to respect you like if you are the undisputed champion in the light heavyweight division or the heavyweight division. So that's another thing that I take into consideration and that's another thing that I would use to assess whether somebody is number one pound for pound but you know you can't really argue with these people about these things because they are so invested they are almost like the LDPC the way the LDPC this is like the white LDPC isn't it you know what I mean it's like a white LDPC sort of mentality that you get because a lot of these people I'm pretty certain a lot of them are not black I'm quite certain a lot of them are not black even the way they, they, they write these things so this one right Dudes in the West praise fighters who do the least, yet what to downplay the only, yet, sorry. So dudes in the West praise fighters who do the least, yet what to downplay the only boxer doing the most is overly active. There is only one Naya Inui, sorry, Naya, Naya Monster. He ain't Crawford, ain't Haley, ain't Tank, ain't Shakur. Fighters in America should be ashamed of themselves. Fair enough. Why should they be ashamed of themselves? I mean, nobody's saying that Naya Inui is not a good fighter. Okay? And quite frankly, he has a pick of the litter. He gets to take these men to Japan in front of his own support. And that's about it. Who cares? You know what I mean? Oh, well, he's doing this, he's doing that, blah, 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 blah. A lot of them are hand-picked for him. They're very well picked. There's a good selection out there. 
they pick for him and he beats him. Big fucking deal. You know, Fulton. You're talking about Ameri- uh, Americans do this. Didn't Fulton go, have to go over to Japan to fight him? When have you ever seen an American do that? You want to talk about an American being spoiled. Yet, Fulton is the one who had to go over to Japan to fight this dude. And of course, he got beaten up. You know what I'm saying? So, there you go. Uh, that being said, let's move on. So, I think you got some responses. This one writes that disrespect for Nui is crazy. Dude's, dude's worked his ass off. Okay, dude has worked his ass off. Now, there's 11 responses there. I'm pretty certain I'm, I'm in there somewhere. So, let's see. 11 responses. This one reads for Ryu. And I now wrote, Would you have credited any other fighter for fighting old ass Donir twice? I just don't agree. God bless. That's what I wrote. You know what I mean? Of course, that's going to trigger the moon. And this one said, Yes, I would after Donir knocked out. K old undefeated champions or contenders. I was like, huh? After? Okay. And I said, such as Because uh who did you know who did who did the Nair beat? The Nair beat one of those English champions, isn't it? One of those guys you might consider to be a Eurobomb or something like that. Anyway, that being said, anyway, moving on it says like I said, such as is it, I'm, I mean, I'm talking about the World Boxing Super Series, right? That's what we're talking about here. And the rematch was the World Boxing Super Series, but, you know, World, World Boxing Super Series is what we're talking about here. It says, like, uh, this one says, uh, it's like saying when Big George Foreman went back and KO'd a world champion, people deserve zero credit for beating him after laughing my ass off. It's not how it worked, dude. Still a menace. Now, I don't know what point he's trying to make there, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that sort of comparison... That analogy doesn't work for me. George Foreman and Manito Donier. Well, I suppose if you want to stretch it a little bit. But then again, I had to ask the question. Who got credit for beating George Foreman? And of course he brings that. It says like, I said, who gets credit for beating old ass Foreman or old ass Ali? I just threw Ali in there just for the fuck of it. You know what I'm saying? Just to make the point. Just to round the point out. It says like, Foreman, credit was given. Ali, dude had Parkinson's. Now, of course, we're talking about Ali when Ali fought him. When Ali beat him. Forgive me. When the guy with the jab, um, what's his name? Can't remember his name now. Larry, um, Larry, <laughs> I've forgotten his name. When Larry beat Ali and he didn't get any credit for it, for it you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I just threw that in, but um, there you go. If I, if I, what's his name again? God, I I'm thinking Larry Bird, but <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Anyway, I might be getting Parkinson. Anyway, it says, um, I said, who got credit? And then, of course, he brings up Holyfield. I think he, he writes Holyfield. It's your more, it's your more supplier, right? It says, Morrison and Holyfield. Now, Foreman actually beat Morrison, so I don't know why he threw that in there. And then he writes Holyfield, and he spells the name wrong anyway. Especially Holyfield, who stopped his winning streak. You know what I mean? I, I think a lot of people are surprised that Foreman beat Morrison anyway. You know what I mean? Because Morrison was looking good until, of course, he got knocked the fuck out. So it is what it is. And then... Hollywood coming along and that was just the way it was supposed to be I don't think he got a great deal of credit for it you know what I'm saying I mean George Foreman was on the big belly old you know what I mean a young guy was supposed to take him out Morrison dropped the ball and then Hollywood came along and did what he was supposed to do most of the credit that, that Hollywood gets actually isn't just based upon what he did in heavyweight and not certainly not based on what he did with George Foreman I think leading up to uh, uh, the heavyweight division from light heavyweight to cruiserweight, this is accomplishments in cruiserweight, which was something that Alexander Usyk strived to emulate in order to beat his record. Uh, not people, not a lot of people talk about that, but his uh, his accomplishments in light heavyweight, and then the weight he was going into the heavyweight division is the reason why people give him a lot of credit. Now, obviously, I have my suspicions about how he got there, but you know that's by the boy. But leaving that alone, he says. I believe Pro Box TV gave Foster the Comeback Fighter of the Year award. That's because I thought that, you know, I just threw out there that um, Shaki Foster could be considered as Fighter of the Year. And, you know, it just turns out that Pro Box TV gave Foster the Comeback Fighter of the Year. Now, if we were to move that comeback out of it, I suppose Fighter of the Year is quite apropos. That being said, it says, Happy New Year to you and your family, 68. All the best for 2024. That's a gentleman. Thank you very much, Auntie Anthony McKenna McKen, sixty fifty. Um, thank you. I really appreciate that. You know, in the midst of all this chaos here, you know what I mean. There's some people. I think I responded to him. Did I respond? 
I must have. I said thanks. You know what I mean? I said thanks, thumbs up. I should have blessed him too. I should have said God bless. Let me just write that too. Let me just write that to him as well. I mean, I, you know, God bless you. I, I, I should write God bless. Yeah. I write that as well. It's only fair. Okay, so now we have um, this guy, user IW2 GV9. I, I swear, when people, I think this is a guy who just started a challenge simply because he's so enraged about what I said about, he knew that he just had to have something out there, so he's not even going to bother putting, I don't know, I, I don't know, that could be the case. But anyway, it looks like a fucking, you can see a lot of these channels don't have any avatar or anything like that. It's just a whole bunch of these users that are enraged about what I said about Inui. So, you know, it says like, what he knew he did, no one would ever be able to repeat again, two times undisputed in a calendar year. Sounds like you're a bit bitter, cause for once a non-black fighter done so well this year, and you're full of it, using Expose just to, I don't know, okay, you know what, maybe I need to expand this a little bit. Yes, there you go. This is what's been cutting you off, so, yeah. So, okay, this is better, sounds like you're a bit bitter because for once a non-black fighter's done so well this year and you're full of and you're, and you're full of it and using the expose too much just like Inui's anymore it, it's like Inui's opponents and okay that's like Inui's opponents and let me tell you mate Inui is the one that's doing the exposing laughing emoji well you know what i mean if you have to put a laughing emoji there that sort of defeats the purpose of it making a, a good point i you know what i mean i think you have to put a laughing emoji there simply because you're not really sure yourself you're not too secure in what you're saying i think i responded in kind and i just wrote laughing emoji thumbs up predictable hypersensitive response but we shall see that's what i wrote um yeah what else have we got we got my man Anthony McCurney says, "What are your wishes for the sport of boxing?" This this was actually an early. This was an actual. This was a, a early uh, response. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I I did a live, and I took that into consideration. Took this this into consideration when he when I did the live. So thank you very much. And um, this one writes, um, "I think Inui is fighter of the year, and Crawford is." I don't know what P.O.T. of the year is. You know what I mean? Is that pound for pound of the year? I don't know what P.O.T. of the year. Uh, I don't know what that means. I saw that and I was still trying to figure it out. Anyway, he says like, we should appreciate both of these guys as great. If you feel differently, you shouldn't have to put down one just because you feel more highly for the other. And then I gave a kind of curt response. I said like, <laughs> I said, I don't recall raising Crawford up, which I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> which I didn't to be honest with you but his response was quite predictable and I suppose you can see it that way when he says well you were just putting Nui down that's what he says he says I was putting Nui down I said no I wasn't I could do a much better job if I wanted to do that which is true I don't think I really was that terrible you know what I'm saying I questioned the people who put him there I didn't say he was a crappy fighter I did question some of the decisions he made and I do still argue that um, you know a lot of it is being manufactured to make it look better than it really is and part of the argument they can make is in fact something, is something that people want to push aside it's the same way that people push belts aside nowadays Nowadays, there are different divisions for a reason and some divisions I believe have more value than others it is what it is if you don't think so then fine then you can say that all the heavyweight divisions when a heavyweight division um, fight goes on it is the same as some sort of ridiculous bantam weight thing that nobody really talks about and you can probably put it down to racism because nobody will, 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 will you know this is not in america or whatever the fuck you know what i mean but i don't think so i think it's, i think it's got to do with interest so that being said he said he knew he's just sorry he knew he's just great dude and he's doing what we want every boxer of every color to do not the problem of no one that your so-called black boxers like to try to crack it until they get 20 wins before they can try let me see let, let, let me see uh let's see what he's written there well they can try um let's see all right uh cherry pick cherry picks record until they get to 20 wins before trying to get a belt no one is forcing you to fight people with losing records i don't know uh, okay oh it goes on 
The reason why Nui is doing so great is because of how fast he did it. When you move, you, sorry, sorry, how fast he did it. When he moved up to 122, a lot of questions were asked. I don't think a lot of questions were asked. I think he was destined to be in that weight class. And I think he was squeezing into the lower weight classes. And that's why he ran from 115. Because he would have gotten beaten. Because he couldn't fit into that weight class anymore. You know what I mean? That's what I believe. It is what it is. And you say, oh, he's too small. Was he smaller than Fulton? You know what I'm saying? Was he, was he smaller than Fulton in that division? You know what I mean? I, I, I mean, I don't get it. It was too small. Is he too small? Would his power carry up? Was he smaller than Fulton? When you look at the fight and he won emphatically, I'm not going to take credit away from it. You want to tell me? You want to tell me, right? That um, he was somehow small. Let me move this a little bit so we can get more. More bang for our buck. All right, there you go. It probably should be this way. He said... Uh, so he says not the problem say was he too small his chin etc Bud had the same questions in Jeff Moon fight but not in his Spence fight why because he'd been in division he said it he said it himself and now he feels like a truth a true welterweight even had some issues cutting 147 blah 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 so Spence anymore he knew he jumped division beat number one champion for two belts and number two champion with two who the fuck number one champion number two champion were you talking about Fulton did Fulton ever ever in your life make the pound for pound the real pound for pound uh, list did Tapales ever ever make the pound for pound list number one champion two belts number two champion with two belts did they ever were they ever on the pound for pound now listen you can go ahead and you can criticize Jess Crawford I'm pretty certain you'll find material there but what I'm saying is this before you start reaching for and don't go and gamble well, have at it I don't really don't, I really could give a shit but I'm saying that Jess Crawford becoming undisputed at welterweight fighting L. Spence to become that champion that well to wait carries more weight in my opinion if you want to if you want to differ fine knock yourself out you know because he's back or whatever I don't care you know he was taking huge risks by doing these fights when he was new to the division you mean doing these fights in his own backyard he was taking risks yeah you know what I'm saying normally a fighter would take some easy fights to acclimate acclimatize to the new weight division oh shit you told me you know what I'm saying? Okay. I say, uh, this guy writes, you should watch some of Fight Films content. I'd like your opinion on what kind of boxing fan he is. Ties into a lot of what you discussed here. All right. We shall see. You know what I mean? This guy right here is getting paid to bash someone special like, you know, shaking my damn head. Uh-huh. Says, bro, he, he, he unified two weight classes, black people are just being salty because he because they dominated the sport in the u.s all right that's what he writes and this one right this one gives me some laughing emojis this one says don't disrespect chocolatito like that shaking my damn head well i didn't disrespect chocolatito you got people on here disrespecting chocolatito saying they knew you knocked them all out so you know what the fuck you having to go at me for i'm saying you should have fought them and said wrong i nearly killed i wrote now i nearly killed that overhyped packet i want to be This one, I think he's done to my chin. It says, uh, 940 says, easily triggered people. <laughs> Laughing emoji, you're triggered. I put in that, that you're actually triggered. It's no one's fault you're easily triggered. No support in America. I'm from America and I support him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound like a white guy. You know what I mean? And I support him. You know, of course you do. You know what I mean? Of course you do. Yeah, stop. Just stop the BS. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty certain he has the, he, listen, he, he, he actually has my support. He has support amongst the, you know, amongst black fans as well. And I'm talking about black fans who like the LDBC fighters. He has support amongst that. That's not what we're arguing here, is it? You know what I'm saying? Because they brought him over specifically to top rank to make him big in America and it didn't work. Now, if you're arguing that for some reason he has support, it just didn't work. They couldn't put on pound for pound. They couldn't even sell his fight in America. Uh, I said, you know, because it, I remember that it was a big deal. Top rank Bob Aaron bringing him over. Thinking that I could sell this product. And it didn't work, did it? So, you know, they've gone back to Japan. 
You know what I'm saying? But I guess you support him. You must have bought all his fights, right? <laughs> I'll see them all. Anyway, when you say Chocolatito, put some respect on the name, brought attention to the lower classes, facts. I, th- I think I responded saying Pacquiao did that or something. Yes, I, yeah, I said Pacquiao did that. Uh, you know what I mean? I think Pacquiao, Barrera, and the other guy that Pacquiao fought three times, who so I can't remember because my mind is turned to mush. This one um, highlights 1245. It says, He doesn't have the opponent, LOL. It's not that a monster's fault, no one is at his level. And here you are using that as a weapon to devalue everything he's done. I'm not using it to devalue everything he's done. I'm just speaking about the reality of what sells in boxing. Now, if you if you see it differently, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of you guys are just too way too fucking sensitive, and you don't you never understand the argument. So, I mean, I understand that you know a lot of you guys who happen to be white, you only hear what you want to hear. You know what I mean? You're under. You're not very smart you only hear what you want to hear and i hate to bring race into it but you know i say the same thing to black people too if i'm saying this to a bunch of black guys you would agree but a lot of you know better a lot of you like white the white ldbc all right stop your joke stop stop your joke he's making everyone look like nobody's somehow you can't see that stop your joke okay you know what i mean extremely off but I respect your opinion now this is a decent person and I think I told him as much I said thank you I deeply respect you you know what I'm saying and this one writes uh, who the fuck is Chocolatito even I didn't disrespect Chocolatito these are these these are fucking Inui fanboys writing something like this so don't hold it against me and he says why are you comparing Inui to some random guy nobody <laughs> knows about laughing my ass up <laughs> yeah so that's got nothing to do with me and, the, and this one writes Chocolatito is a future Hall of Famer with an incredible boxing career the real question is who are you so somebody's you know got their panties up in a twist over that let me try and move some of this stuff up okay so we're gonna so we can get the last bits in that's it and this one writes why are you a wilder hater now that was a good question because I am a wilder hater am I not you know what I'm saying uh, I don't think we'll be able to see the response will we let me see if we can see the response. I think I have to make this very small. Okay, continue. Says, why you hate Wilder? Said, so, because I wrote, because he's a filthy liar and spiritually destructive. That's what I wrote about Deontay Wilder. Did somebody else respond to it? it says, uh, anyway, and this one writes, racist video. What did I respond to that? I responded by saying, nope, you hope it's racist. <laughs> and this one writes, Chocolate Hitler will be the Hall of Fame. The fuck? And uh, that's about it. So, those are the responses so far. If I get any more responses, I'd like to put them up and make a video out of it. You know what I'm saying? I think that I've answered some of the questions that uh, are pertinent to this. You know, um, interesting stuff. I mean, they're not easy to read. I think when it comes to comments like that, they're never easy to read for me. But there you have it. So, see you guys later. Even in the time of Jesus